Hey guys, welcome to another episode of IGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're going to be looking at section 9.4 of the syllabus. Um, and this is mainly to do with the topic of blood. And so we've got all this different stuff here that you might want to quickly have a read of before we um, continue the video. Alrighty, so the first thing that we're going to be looking at is the composition of blood. Now on the right here is a quick, fairly simple diagram that I found on Google Images. Um, however, things like buffy coat and hematocrit, these terms are not um, things that you need to know in your course. What you do need to know is the things on the left hand side of the page where we've got plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Now the aim of this video is to give you a quick understanding of what each of these four things um, do. Okay, and so therefore the first thing we're going to be looking at is plasma. Now plasma is the liquid that transports substances to and away from the cells. Now this can be things like amino acids, um, CO2, glucose and all these other things. Uh, and another important function is that it holds blood cells okay both red blood cells and white blood cells and also platelets that we will be looking at in the next coming slides so the red blood cells in a nutshell is used to transport oxygen around the body now how it does it it contains hemoglobin right in the middle of its um, structure which is actually what binds to uh, what, what binds the oxygen to it Okay, so we say blood carries oxygen, but more specifically, it's the red blood cells that contain the hemoglobin which binds to the oxygen, allowing it to be transported around the body. So, yep, red blood cells are involved in the transport of oxygen, full stop. Now, you need to be able to recognize how a red blood cell looks under the microscope. So, on the left-hand side here, red blood cells are usually quite circular uh, with a whitish uh, middle part of their structures and that's because they don't have any nucleus okay and um, a reason for that is because red blood cells want to maximize the area in which they can have their hemoglobin um, so therefore they don't have a nucleus but a large hemoglobin instead to take its place um, which is you know an adaptation for it to be able to transport a load of oxygen around their bodies since it's its main purpose. So yeah, this is um, how a red blood cell might look under the microscope, so make sure you understand and uh, memorize that. Next up are the white blood cells, and again, you need to know how these look like in, uh, in un under microscope conditions. But we've got two different types of lymphocytes. So the first type of, uh, sorry, white blood cells. So the first type of white blood cells are lymphocytes, and lymphocytes are involved in the production of antibodies. Now, if you don't really get what that means now, you don't have to, because you'll be learning more of that in the later sections when you kind of, um, when you learn about immunity and stuff like that. Um, and phagocytes are involved in phagocytosis. Um, and phagocytosis is basically um, how cells like these kind of break down molecules uh, by engulfing it and using enzymes to break it down and releasing the fragments out. But of course that again you'll be learning in um, the next couple sections or even maybe next year. But um, for now you just need to know the terms lymphocytes, antibodies and phagocytes for phagocytosis. And that's not too hard. Now you need to be able to distinguish them under microscope. So Lymphocytes have a huge circular nucleus um, within their cells, whereas phagocytes, they are more lobed and not so circular. So it's fairly easy to tell once you kind of compare it to one another. Now platelets. Now platelets are involved in the formation of blood clots. Okay, and you may already know, but blood clotting is basically a protective mechanism so that we don't lose any blood in case of an injury. So if if you get scratched, you you don't you don't die of losing blood. All right, you 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 find that your blood will stop at some point, and that's because of blood clotting. If if that didn't happen, then anything could potentially kill us. You know. But as to how these blood clots form, 
Only those that are undertaking the extended pathway actually need to know a little bit more detail about this. So in a nutshell, platelets immediately stick to the side of damage. So wherever the cut is, platelets immediately kind of um, attach onto that side and chemical signals are then released from the platelets that attract cells that are nearby and then clump them together. And then a series of reactions happen, what they call a coagulation cas cascade, and um, it includes the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin in the blood. And what that does is this forms a thread which traps red blood cells and eventually create a clot so that, you know, blood can't leak out anymore. All right, so Hopefully that gives you, uh, uh, hopefully that makes sense, um, and if it doesn't then you can do further research and everything, but those are the basic steps, and if you can memorize that then I'm sure you'll be fine. So overall we've learnt about the composition of blood, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, and um, I just want you to go back and have a quick read of it again, make sure you make sense of everything, and um, if, it, if it does then that's great, and if it doesn't then you know, you'll just have to do a little bit more research or, you know, watch the video a couple more times in order for you to understand everything. Alright, cool. So, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.